hop it in. I see him. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, we're, we're gathering our panelists and we'll be ready to begin in a moment. I love it when dogs appear in the camera. <laughs> I really should find a different spot. The <laughs> it makes you look like you have one very large ear. <laughs> it also looks like you have a halo. I was thinking more that than the ear, but thanks. <laughs> Good. Well, I, why don't we get underway if that works for everybody? Um, hi, um, I'm Larry Sullivan. Uh, I am the uh, grade level administrator for the ninth grade this year. And I know I'm seeing some familiar names from our webinar from a couple of weeks ago. So um, good to uh, have you all back with us. Um, today, we um, have a few different people to talk with you um, regarding some of the resources that are available in the building. Uh, we have our math chair, Becky Pavia. We have our uh, librarian, Michelle Ludala. And we have Ari Rothman, who will talk about clubs and activities. And um, we'll be joined in a little while by our English department chair, who will talk about some of the, the writing uh, resources available to students here. But before that, I would uh, like to ask our principal, uh, Bill Egan, to offer a welcome to the attendees as well. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to welcome you uh, to the webinar today. You know, truly, uh, there's no better day when students enter the building. And today was like a weird kind of first day of school again as the seniors fully came back to school. Uh, next week, we get the, the privilege of, of welcoming all the other grades as well over different days. Um, but there is really no better day when students enter the building. It was great going into classrooms and seeing a full classroom. Uh, you know, honestly, the uh, students were really happy to be here. Uh, you know, I went around and talked to them and they, they were, were truly excited to kind of be with their peers. I think it's going to be the same next week when we have all the other grade levels arrive. Um, and again, as long as we, we practice our good mitigation strategies, uh, you know, we'll, again, we'll be able to stay safe. So. I'm thankful that, that we were able to get the seniors back and I look forward to having the other grades back as well. So I hope you find today's uh, program informative. And if there's anything you need from me ever, please feel free to reach out and uh, I'll always get back to you. So thank you guys. Enjoy the webinar. I'm gonna actually take myself off the video. Thank you, Bill. Um, I, I think our ninth graders are off to, to a good start, obviously. Um, we see them for part of the day here. We see them for part of the week here at this point. Um, but I certainly, um, you know, see students who look as if they're happy here, students who, um, you know, uh, are, are enjoying social time together in the cafeteria while being distant. Um, I do, I do know that, uh, you know, I, once progress reports come out, sometimes, there can be a little bit more reality hitting for students. That, um, so I think, you know, making those academic adjustments to the high school, um, you know, can be, can be challenging, particularly at this time, um, uh, you know, as we get into October and near, we're about two weeks, uh, almost three weeks away from the end of the first quarter. So, um, you know, they, yeah, it's going quickly. Uh, but uh, certainly, you know, one of the things we want to uh, reinforce with you is if you have a concern about how your student is doing, being aware of some of the resources that are available. Um, one of the first and foremost, and I know uh, when we had our webinar last time, you heard from our school counseling head, Cindy Rivera, uh, reach out to your, your student's school counselor, um, if your student is working with a support program of some sort, whether uh, that's through special education or uh, we talked a little bit last time about the ACES program, I think 
uh, you know, you can also reach out to either uh, your student special ed monitor or uh, to Nancy Stevens, who's our ACES coordinator. Um, but those are those are good starting places if you are seeing um, anxiety on your child's part, if you're seeing your your child struggling or not understanding why perhaps they're not finding the success they want to. Um, so I, I think, um, you know, from our perspective, the class is off to a good start, but you, you each know your child and what your child is experiencing as part of this. And, and certainly we want to help support all of our kids. So I know um, this is a little bit of a different year for us because traditionally we have had some drop-in centers that existed for kids in math and in um, in English through the, through the writing center. And in order to keep our class numbers down, we had to make some tough decisions about not, not allocating staff there this year and putting them in the more traditional classroom. But I, but I know um, that support exists for your kids, uh, regardless of whether it's in, a, in, in one location in, you know, the one period. Um, and I know today, uh, Becky and Evan in particular are going to talk about how to access that. So I know Becky is up against a bit of a time crunch. So I, I think I'll uh, ask her to let us know a little bit about how to access math help from teachers. Sure. So, um, so again, my name is Becky Pavia. I'm the math department chair. And one thing I think freshmen struggle with is just the, the expectations of assessments and um, the level of independence with high school. So even though we don't have math center this year, teachers are very available. And I would strongly encourage um, you to have your students reach out to their teachers as a first step in the line of defense if they're struggling. Um, our teachers have been doing Zoom extra help. I've heard um, you know teachers walking through how to submit assignments um, before school, after school. They're very responsive. So I think um, one thing kids need to kind of get comfortable with is what I call metacognition. So they need to get used to um, asking good questions and really understanding what they know and don't know about a topic. And a good place to start with that is their homework. And if they're really doing their homework, um, you know, almost as if it were a quiz or a test, not just trying to do it to get it done, but going through and really trying to answer the questions independently, they'll be able to identify where they're stuck and that can lead to better questions in the classroom. So if they, if they have a good sense of, you know, what they're struggling with, which a lot of freshmen actually don't, they know they, they you know, the question might be hard, but they don't know kind of the, the finite detail of where that goes awry. Um, so the, the, the questions and, and using homework is a good place to start. If they're still stuck after that, reach out to the teacher. Um, tests are a little bit different in high school because there are no retakes and they're timed. And I, I know coming from middle school, I don't think that is always the case. Um, so it's a little bit of a more stressful environment. And I think kids tend to focus on that test. Um, and again, I direct you back to the homework and like leading up to it, if they have good habits, um, those tests will become less stressful. So um, time management and organization are gonna be important. Don't wait until the night before. Um, some of my students like to email me at 10 o'clock at night before a test and they want answers to questions. And I promise them I am not awake at 10 o'clock at night to respond. Um, but I would, uh, I guess the moral of my story is, um, is really start with your teacher. I know um, a lot of reactions from parents are, we'll, we'll just hire a tutor. And I, I don't know that that's always the best course of action. Your teachers are free and we know how we're teaching the material. We see the student work, we know where they're struggling, we know where the course is going. Um, so, so tutors sometimes can complicate that because they're, they're, they might present material in a different way. Um, I would I would really encourage starting with the teacher first and and making use of the resources that we have at the high school before you reach to outside you know means. Thank you, Becky. Um, I should have uh, mentioned earlier we do have the question and answer function at the bottom. So if questions come up, um, certainly we'll try to field them to the appropriate person. If for whatever reason, as I said, sometimes a, a teacher may need to go to another class and if it's a discipline specific question, we may not be able to answer it here, but we can forward it and get an answer uh, from, the, from the right person, so. 
Great. Thanks, Becky. Yeah. And feel free to reach out, email if you have any questions, concerns regarding that. Good. Thank you. Um, Michelle, I believe you are also under some time constraints. Um, so Michelle is our librarian and I believe is also going to do some screen sharing with you of some of the resources. Michelle, you ready? No, you're, you're muted. Shall I, un do I need to unmute you or are you? Okay, hang on. I don't know why that is. Let's see, ask to unmute. Okay, try, can you try now, Michelle? All right, there we yeah, go. I'm good Okay, now, sorry you. about that. Um, no problem. Um, hi everyone, I'm going to go to screen share and walk you through just a handful of slides. Uh, so bear with me while I transition to that. And we should be good to go. I'm hoping you can all see my screen. Yep. Okay, great. All right. Hi, I just wanted to give you a couple of words about the library program and um, thank you for, for asking us to be a part of this. Um, so first I want to say that the, the room is a study hall. The library room is a study hall this year. But um, the, the library program itself is really thriving and doing very well in the virtual space. Um, this is, we've been participating in classes and getting out to do book talks with kids. So we're really excited about that. Um, last summer, you may remember that we um, offered students to participate in sort of what we called a, a little boot camp uh, to get them geared up on Schoology training and getting to know a few resources about the library. So we introduced them to Schoology and to, um, uh, to the library services. We also did some BYOD tips on how to be uh, use tech for support. We, wanted to make sure that they understood that Chrome is a browser to use in school for all things school. Um, it's really important and that they can set up Chrome to you have multiple profiles. So it's really easy for them and seamless for them to stay in one school profile all the time logged into all the resources and then have a separate profile that they can toggle to if they have a different Gmail account. Um, so that was the summer. We do have a research model that we use in every course, in every, wherever we do work with the classroom teacher. This is our research model. We call it the Wiser model. It's inspired by work of librarians across the country that we found really good and we sort of crafted it into one of our very own. On the bottom right hand side of this screen is a video that kind of walks the kids through this research model. And this was one of the materials we had available to the kids over the summer. Um, I will make the slide deck available. I'll send it on to the parents um, uh, uh, it's, it's, and make it accessible to all of you in case you want to watch any of the videos that are embedded into it. So, for example, this one. Um, you, we kind of think of assured experiences across the curriculum for research this way. Um, your freshmen are here under the ninth grade. Um, so as they move through the curriculum, it's not necessarily that each project will be exactly aligned, but the timing is pretty good. We do have four major uh, projects with all of the freshmen in the freshman year. Um, two in English and two in social studies. And then as they get on to, we build on the skills that the, we teach them in the ninth grade, in the 10th grade. 11th grade is really sort of the pinnacle year in some ways for research because we have two major research papers, one in English in the fall and one in social studies in the spring. And we work extremely closely with the teachers and the students as they work through that process. So we know what the target is for research and we build those skills in starting all the way at the beginning of the freshman year. Um, this year has been uh, exciting and transitional. Everything is new to everyone. It's kind of a, so you're not, your ninth graders are not alone. Lots of things are feeling new to us too. Uh, we have been in the class, we spent the first three weeks of the school year really in the classrooms, book talking with students. And of course they can't necessarily browse the collection quite the way we're used to. So we put on the homepage of our library um, if they need a print book, there's a form to fill out. We get it to them. We go pick it out. We check it out to them. We take it up to the classroom teacher. Um, and then we do have really an extensive collection of ebooks and audiobooks as well. 
Um, the ebooks and audio books traditionally are very hard to display, but if you look at this display across the top of the screen, you'll see that we've created posters for everyone. Well, we're in the process of creating posters for every one of our ebooks. There are 800 of them. Um, but we're going across the curriculum and poster by poster and we're putting these around the school. So all the kids need to do is hover their phone over that QR code and then log in and they can access an ebook anywhere, anytime, anyway. And so we have displays like this throughout the library because these displays, they can really sort of get to see what the books look like. Um, at the bottom of the screen, this is another one of the embedded videos. Um, we will show students how to navigate an ebook here in our collection. So the good news about this is that our, our actual circulation for fiction alone is up 200% over the same time last year. We're pretty excited about that. We are embedded with the classroom teacher, so literally embedded with the classroom teacher in Schoology. So this is the class teacher's course. You can see there's a red folder with library materials that leads to an entire list of resources and assignments that we've created so that we can monitor the students as they do research and give them tips as they go along. So we don't, we tell them don't submit. It's not really a gotcha assignment. It's a let's help you assignment. So we can check in periodically and progress or they can say, hey, I'm working on this or I need something and we can jump into the assignment along with them and monitor them that way. Um, it really helps the teacher, it helps the kids. It's really just great to be able to have that seamless collaboration right there in Schoology. Um, also, we've embedded resources into Schoology. So let's say our ebook collection is right there on the left, no matter what course they're in, it's right there embedded into Schoology. So at the top of this list, you see featured group absolutism. The second one is featured group Amstead research paper. That's actually where I'm headed now to go up to class to the kids. So we've curated uh, 72 books for absolutism and 47 books for the research paper. And the kids can just come into Schoology, they can click on their featured group and they can start looking through the collection and checking out eBooks that way. Um, the same is true with several of our databases. So we're really excited about this new integration. And so the students don't have to make a lot of steps and go to a lot of places in order to access their resources. They're right there in Schoology. The virtual library is accessible to our students. It's available all day. There's a link on the home page of the library. And if kids need help with something, they can just pop into the virtual library. And that is my last slide. So I'm going to head off to class. I'm going to stop screen sharing. So unless there are questions, that's it for me. No questions. Larry, we can't hear you. I'm, I'm simultaneously trying to rename Evan and uh, and uh, <laughs> talk. Never, never good for me to do more than one thing. Usually, not even good for me to try to do one thing. Um, so, uh, I I think you can see why we have such an award-winning library, and uh, it's a great resource for kids, for academics, for uh, for pleasure reading, and. Uh, I hope uh, I hope uh, your ninth graders take advantage of it. So thank you, Michelle. Great, and we have been joined by the masks, the masked one, Evan Remley, who is actually in a classroom uh, currently. He is our English department chair, um, and he can talk a little bit about uh, writing resources for students at the high school. Hi, everyone. I, uh, yeah, I apologize. I mean, uh, I sent my students out for a, a mass break, so I just have a, a couple minutes right now. Um, but just, um, you know, writing instruction has been uh, kind of like, I sort of thought a little bit about what I wanted to say that writing instruction has been sort of one of our um, uh, kind of big points of emphasis at the high school since I've been here. Um, and we have a couple different, uh, like, sort of writing resources that I'd like to let you know about. This is a very strange year, so um, things are a little bit different. So I, I thought I would speak to some of those differences as well. So one of the primary sources we had for like writing, um, uh, writing instruction just outside of the classroom as a support service was the Writing Center. Um, the Writing Center is not open this year. The website is still operational and it's a great source of uh, if you go into the NCHS uh, homepage, you'll see the Writing Center up there. It's a great source of models. 
tutorials from everything to analytic essays, thesis essays, to um, you know college essays and the like. Um, so uh, from a classroom standpoint, the classroom teachers are gonna focus really heavily on writing instruction in this hybrid format. So one of the things that's been, we've been really trying to integrate um, that's I think oh, just a, an instructional point for parents would be the use of feedback for students. So I, that's been something that we've kind of been developing in this hybrid format, like how to use like, feedback in different forms. So I guess I would say that's, we're still trying to continue the drafting processes the way we normally would uh, in conventional instruction. If your student is like, yep, it's submitted, it's done, I'm good. Uh, be a little bit cautious of that. They might be sort of running through just to like that sort of check mark, like, hey, we're done with this sort of uh, mentality that kind of we wanted to avoid with distance learning. So we're still going through multiple drafts, um, multiple pieces of development. I don't want to get into too much detail here with um, the uh, like the forms, like our portfolios, the anchors of our like writing instruction. Your class, your child's classroom teacher is sort of a great resource to explain those things um, and how we sort of modified them a little bit to approach hybrid instruction and just the, the challenges of the school year. But there's still your child's teacher is still is available for conferences and one-on-one -on -one support. It's a little different this year. This conferences have to be virtual or through digital feedback, um, but it's still there. And we're gonna kind of lean on each other and hopefully continue to provide the level of, of instruction and care that we've, we've kind of come to always expect from um, you know, our, our instructional team here. I, I, I would add to what Evan said, you know, we're, we're very much invested in process writing that students are not you know just going home and churning out an essay it really especially with the ninth graders um they're doing this in pieces they're doing this with feedback from uh peers with feedback from the teacher and really trying to ingrain those those principles of um as, as Evan mentioned, you know, it's not about completion. It's, it's about um, learning from the process itself. Okay. All right, well, I, I, I said my piece. I hope that was uh, provide some information, some background. Um, and as always, you know, if you need, if your child needs help, they can always reach out directly to their teacher and just sort of get some, at least this, this, the ball rolling in terms of like resources and interventions. Thanks, Ed. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. And we're, we, we're also joined by Ari Rothman, who is the assistant principal this year, who's working with the 11th grade, but has, for my time here, and maybe our, your whole time here, helped coordinate our co-curricular activities. So he's going to talk about uh, the, the wealth of opportunities and how kids can access a virtual club fair. Yes, thank you, Larry. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, very briefly, uh, we offer a wide variety of opportunities for kids to get involved in the school community, for kids to explore interests. Um, in addition to a very robust interscholastic athletics program and theater program, uh, we run over the course of a year any, anywhere from 50 to 60 different clubs, 99% um, of which are student generated. Um, our system is real simple. If a kid has an interest, we figure out a way to turn it into a club. Um, that's really the requirement. One person has to be interested. Uh, there's a wealth of opportunities already. And um, again, like most things this year, the variety of them are meeting uh, through Zoom. Um, but if it's a small enough group after school, we also are meeting in a classroom, you know, again, appropriately spaced. On the high school website, there is a link to co-curricular activities, which brings up, and I think this may be in reflection, a list that looks like this. And, and it is there now, and it really is a almost 15-page list of all the clubs that are active. Um, prior to last week, it had been the list from the spring. This is the current list that's there now, um, which has the information on the different clubs, contact information for um, 
advisors as well as student leaders. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. And if anybody's interested, they should reach out to those student leaders and, and or the advisor. Um, Larry mentioned the club fair. What we typically do is hold a fair in the cafeteria and we bring in all new students. Um, obviously we can't do that this year. So what we're in the process of doing is collecting little videos from each of the clubs. They're slow in coming in, but we'll get to a point where we'll post them and there will be video links, um, which just again, elaborate upon the little blurbs that are there for each of the clubs. But, you know, my attitude and our attitude has always been, we want every kid to be part of our community, not just in classes. So, we're open for all suggestions and we really want kids to explore ideas and be creative and, you know, feel good about contributing and being part of the school community outside of the classroom. That's really it. Anything else, Larry? No, thanks. Thank you, Ari. Um, all right. And again, if any kid is interested, send them my way. Take care. Okay. Thank you. So, so thank you. I hope you learned a little bit about uh, some of the resources here. Certainly you can reach out to any of the uh, people you heard from today, or if you are not sure who to reach out to, I'm happy to be a contact person as well. As I said, always uh, a school counselor is a great starting point too. If you're ever wondering what some of the resources are or you, you're seeing your child frustrated or struggling with something, uh, we are here to help them. We want to get them the help they need. And um, certainly we'll, uh, we'll work together as a team. Um, that, that I think more than anything, um, you know, that, that we do coordinate as administration, as school support staff, and as classroom teachers uh, to, to work with kids uh, this year and every year. So, thanks. Any other questions? Great. Okay. Well, we, we definitely look forward to seeing all of our ninth graders here uh, next by the end of next week. That's really going to be an exciting uh, time for us. Um, I hope your, your students are excited about coming back as well and, and being together as a class. And uh, we will, uh, we will go forward together. Thank you all so much for attending. Oh, we, we had a question pop up. Let me, oh, thank you. It's a thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Take care, all. Thanks. Bye. All right. I have stopped the recording. I think we're good. Any